Today we're going over the brand new Death's Watch Codex for Warhammer 40k. This is our first look review of the new book. Spiky bits. Make sure you stay in the trenches by becoming a supporter over on Patreon and also scoring yourself some free miniature swag in the process. Subscribe to this YouTube channel. Check out our site, spikybits.com, for all the hot hobby tutorials, news, rumors on all your favorite hobby topics. And head on over to thelongwar.net. That's the home of the battle reports for exclusive content, early access videos, and more. Become a veteran of the long war today. All right, and we're back. So this is the most, I don't know, eagerly anticipated new supplement, I guess, for 40K. It's only been, it might only be the only, the only codex we see this year. We haven't seen an actual new set, a uh, new complete set of rules since uh, the Tau release next, last November. You know, we got the Angels of Death, which was basically updates to Codex Space Marine. And now we have a brand new full 110 page codex here, right? So that's really cool to see. This, uh, supposedly the word on the street is that this book was a direct result of, uh, you know, put into production quickly, um, maybe in that three month time block that they were talking about being able to rapidly uh, put out products back in November that they were hiring folks for over at Games Workshop. Don't know. Pure speculation that we're hearing from folks at this point from a lot of our uh, store and uh, sources over in Nottingham as well. But, uh, you know, there's no way we'll ever really know. But it's cool to see that Games Workshop can definitely uh, get out a quality product. This book, in my opinion, is is written very well. Uh, there's a lot of designer notes in here. There's a couple of things that don't quite still make sense to me and maybe, you know, obviously drop it in the comments what you think about it and uh, who knows, maybe we'll see a Death Watch FAQ. I would like to think that there would be no need to see a Death Watch FAQ going forward, but, you know, um, there's always, you know, room for improvement, I feel like. So you got your great looking book here, your hardcover, um, all, all the bells and whistles, you know, Games Workshop is no slouch when it comes to laying stuff out and making stuff look good. On the inside, we got this great looking leaf uh, over leaflet cover kind of thing here where it's basically some death watch rolling out of a land raider and you know if you read my article about the the top uh what is it the top 10 surprises in the new codex i actually forgot to mention probably one of the best if not towards the top is a new piece of war gear which lets you um pull stuff around the table which is going to be with without using a psychic power and uh that's going to be a big thing too and i'm kind of sad that i overlooked it i guess a lot of times when i, when I write stuff pretty late at night uh, I don't get to make all the points I want, and then uh, by the time I, I publish it the next day, it's uh, no takesy backsies. <laughs> so that being said, let's dive right in. So of course you've got the contents here, which is going to give you, you your bestiary section, which explains a lot of the specific type of characters or models, I guess. Um, some stuff that's going on, like setting up the story and things. And then you get into the actual, you know, the, the miniature porn here, which is all the great looking pictures of all the models and all the stuff that really makes us get our hobby juices going and really want to aspire to do greatness, you know, and all this stuff. And it's, it's always amazing to see. Then we get into the forces themselves, which are going to be all the data sheets, um, the appendix, which is going to be all your special rules, your traits, your, your tactics, your range weapon, your tables, all the new stuff, the relics, the objectives, um, you know, the Maelstrom objectives there, which we're also going to show you the data cards as well as the new dice uh, here as well towards the, towards the end of this review. That being said, um, you know, overall, we, we saw a lot of pictures during, during the week, a lot of leaks out there, people getting their stuff early and throwing it up on the interwebs. I, we didn't see a lot of pictures of the artwork, which is a fantastic looking stuff in here. I mean, GW is just really stepping up their game, you know, as far as like the whole uh, layouts and everything. I mean, look at this full color, like, you know, what's going on in the solar system or the, excuse me, the universe, uh, the galaxy rather where you know you got all the orcs you got the eldars you got all this other crazy stuff here all the high fleets come rolling in deep you know and all that stuff and it's just kind of crazy you know they got the leviathan coming up through the galactic plane there you know trying to hit uh terra and mars and just kind of basically like hey what's going on oh whoa shit there's a lot of stuff going on here you got the necrons you know all all sorts of crazy stuff so that's neat to see and then they set up all the different um factions of the death watch or i guess the militant chambers you know all the cool looking stuff in here. It's just very, very nicely done, you know, to really get your hobby juices going. Talking about Death Watch and man, just all sorts of stuff here. Chaplain's Librarians, you know, just getting into all of the different types of units and the cool stories about them. 
look at that dropship graphics right there. I mean, it's just great looking stuff. You know, it's just the stuff that we love. We crack out on and geek out on as, as 40K players. And then the toy porn section with our, you know, sweet centerfolds and stuff. Look at all those, those dudes surrounded by all those uh, wraiths. That's just uh, wraiths and converted spiders, it looks like. Yeah, those are really neat looking. Huh, very cool. Uh, regardless, so lots of cool looking stuff in here, lots of drop ships taking it to the towel, no, no, uh, no complaints there, right? And then it gets into the actual section of rules, which we're going to talk about. So here's the uh, Black Spear Strike Force, very similar to, you know, the stuff we saw on Dark Angels, the stuff the Gladius Strike Force, of course, the Lion's Blade Strike Force and Dark Angels. Um, very good looking formation, sudden onslaught's gonna be great, you just be able to deep strike your stuff in non-vehicle models if you adhere to this chart. Now this being a first look review, we're not gonna really get into the rules themselves, we're gonna break that down at a later date. I have a whole slew of stuff to talk about because I'm really impressed by the formations in the back that let you combo in, you know, uh, jump packs, bikes, terminators, uh, infantry you know themselves and a lot of abilities confer across and that's going to be a big thing like the the bikes have skilled rider which confers to the squad the jump packs actually you can reroll fail you know your charge distances as well per the gw faq um some stuff doesn't confer but the fact that you can put like you know a single terminator in there with a storm shield or something in the front um, and now you can create a basically these little mini Death Stars that have preferred enemy against a certain uh, force um, or battlefield role is really clutch because now you can add in things like um, a sanguinous priest, a sanguinary priest with like feel no pain or some you know something to that effect. Another the the chapter tactics don't go away if you add them for normal marines if you add them to the Death Watch because they have their own specific mission tactics themselves, which are two different things. And until we see FAQ, of course, uh, there's no way to know, but I would think inherently uh, that's what would be how that works. I've been wrong before. Games Workshop may FAQ it. I don't know. So can you mix chapter tactics and mission tactics? Hard to say. But regardless, it's a great bonus for having that preferred enemy, kind of that faux preferred enemy against a, uh, because it's only to hit, it's not on the wound. Um, against a certain battlefield roles. And it's changeable depending on, you know, you can change it uh, with the flexible mission tactics command benefit here you can change it with some of the special characters and warlord traits you can also change it um it's just one of those things that you gotta kind of plan it out kind of like using the ultramarine uh, doctrines in uh, the normal space marine codex so uh s some stuff to talk about we got some new units in here and this watch is looking pretty fresh with the guardian spear you know the custodies normally have that so now we have rules for that in 40k it's hard to say what it'll be in 30k when the new uh book seven drops uh prospero inferno the whole saga of the space wolves versus the thousand sons but you know they had a detachment of custodies that had a detachment of sisters of silence in there so it's gonna be interesting to see what those rules pan out to be and then of course you've got all of the characters here some stuff to note the veterans are same price as a normal stern guard you got all sorts of upgrades here including the ability to take frag cannons four per squad frag cannon uh, an amazing weapon that I think we're gonna see a lot more of on the tabletop terminators you pick them by the squad you can start with one model and add up um, jumping over to the dreadnoughts nothing new there then you got Vanguard you can pick them by the single model bikers you can pick by the single model and they're gonna form those super squads that we talked about in this formation in the back here these kill teams and kill teams form a squad that can't separate but they get these um, these benefits here which is rerolling um, Miles from this formation can reroll to wound rolls and armor pen rolls of one of non vehicle. So they're all a little different. Sometimes it's to hit, sometimes it's to wound, all sorts of different things. And then remember that also, too, they have their mission tactics uh, as well. So they're getting all sorts of extra bonuses here. You just line up your, your abilities right, and you're going to get so you're going to do some work there. Then you got the Warlord traits table, just like any other. Um, you know, codex that's coming out. You've got some special ability or special rules here. Combat squads, nothing new. Faction and allies, as to be expected. Warlord traits right there. Then you've got this special rule called Atonement Through Honor, which lets them get double attacks against or certain models, most notably the Black Shields that I found. Uh, certain models can get double attacks against char independent characters, monsters, creatures, or vehicles, or if they're outnumbered. Now, it doesn't apply to everybody, so keep that in mind. But what does apply to everybody is a special issue ammunition, which seems like everybody pretty much gets that for the most part. And then it gets into the mission tactics, which we already talked about. They all provide a rerolling to hits of one against, and that's both combat and shooting, 
against certain force in our uh, battlefield roles like troops, fast attack, HQs, heavy supports, or elites. So it's a good way to get around, uh, hey, just not picking infantry per se. Hey, I want to pick troops. You know, maybe I don't like OPSEC or something like that. Then it gets into the war gear section, which has a ton of new stuff. It's going to take a, you know, you're going to want to take a while to study this whole section here. The, um, you know, the Black Star gets uh, new upgrades, cluster launcher, rocket launcher as well. It has a special piece of war gear that lets it reroll its jinx saves. Then you've got the special issue ammunition, which applies differently to stalker pattern bolt guns, which you can also take. Remember, they are heavy, but they're also concussive, so something to remember. The heavy bolter has a heavy flamer strap to it now, and now it's the Infernus heavy bolter. You can fire both profiles as one, and most notably, the Death Watch Frag Cannon has an extra profile called Solid Shell, which is Strength 7, AP 3, Assault 2, Impact, and Impact if you're shooting it within 12. Strength is increased to 9, and AP increased to 2. It's a mini LAS cannon, and it's delicious, especially when you can teleport in and be right next to people. There's that Guardian Spear, that Astotes, uh Guardian Spear piece of equipment, Strength plus 1, Melee, or AP 2, Melee block two-handed, so you can attempt to block one attack. If you roll higher than the hit roll, it's blocked. Heavy Thunder Hammer, Strength 10, AP 2, Melee, Pulverized, Concussive, two-handed, unwieldy. You can't take a Storm Shield with this, but it is Strength 10, AP 2 all day, and if you roll a 6 on to wound, it's got instant death. And with the amount of attacks you can probably get, of course, you're going to be minus one because it's two-handed. You're probably going to be doing the Lord's work right there, I feel like. Then there's some other new stuff like the Clavis and a couple of other pieces of work that we didn't really get to and we're not going to in this video. There's the Halo Launcher, which lets you reroll your Jinx. And then the Relics of the Vigilant. My personal favorite, and I think you're going to see this on the tabletop, is the Beacon Angelus, which lets you uh, activate the Beacon. You have to be uh, in addition once per game at the start of any friendly movement phase, so you can't be off the board. You have to be on the board. The Barrel can use the Beacon to teleport his comrades to his position. If he does so, remove one friendly unit that has a Death Watch faction from the board, even if it's locked in combat, and then it immediately arrives again within six inches of the Barrel using Deep Strike, but it does not scatter. So it's a good way to get around the table. Uh, as long as you have one model with this piece of war gear on the table and alive at the start of the movement phase. Very important distinction. There's your Death Watch tactical objectives and your summary at the back of the book. Now we're 12 minutes in. I think that was a great uh, first look review of the new book there. Uh, amazing looking artwork, great rules that I feel are going to see play on the tabletop in both competitive and narrative formats. But now let's take a look at the data card pack, which I'm super digging because basically, you know, it's got the Maelstrom objectives, which uh, we've always seen here, but it also has these cheat sheet cards for your mission tactics. So you can be like, all right, we're on Pur um, Purgatus right now, but now I'm going to switch it up to Malleus, you know, so you can keep track of them on the tabletop. I am all about some game aids. It's not contagious. It's perfectly okay. These are the things you want on the tabletop, so you can help you play your game. Games Workshop, make some of these for the units so I can play with them on the tabletop and I don't have to use the army builder. You don't have to keep up with army builders. You don't have to maintain them. Just give me my stack cards, just like Privateer, man. Like, it would be so much easier to have this stuff on the tabletop. Privateer does it. Fantasy Flight does it. You guys could do it too, and I'll totally pay the same price for this stuff. You know what I mean? So then here's the objective cards which I think are a great fit too. And here's the key cards for how they work because you can sub out the special first six cards uh, if you want to make them Death Watch flavor or you can just play with the normal set of Maelstrom cards there. Uh, I think this retails for like eight bucks. It's a good pickup if you intend to play uh, the Death Watch. Plus it gives you those, um, those sweet, sweet mission tactics cards there. Now we're gonna take a look at these dice. Now, normally uh, I am super salty about dice that don't come with um, the symbols on the sixes, you know what I mean? Because when you see the symbol, you want to be happy that you rolled it. Not, oh crap, that's a one. But that being said, these are pretty sweet dice. Like, they have all the normal 40k like font numbers. Let's zoom in on this a little bit, just to get you a feel for how cool these dice really are. So here's the dice right here. You get 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20 dice, which I feel is pretty good. They're heavy. They are. They got some heft to them. They're heavy than most normal dice there, right? So they have the G-Dub numbers on all of them right there. But then on the one, which is kind of, like I said, you don't exactly want to see these symbols. They have different chapter symbols that could be, you know, part of the Death Watch, like, you know, Exorcist or... Um, you know, Silver Skulls or uh, Flesh Terrors, you know, all sorts of cool stuff there. Iron Hands. So there's a bunch of them. Raven Guard, uh, or Exorcist, or Mothers Mortifactors. Then we got Death, 
or Dark Angels, Blood Angels, so all the good chapters that we know, and some of the more obscure ones that are still pretty cool, White Scar, Space Wolf, so all sorts of, uh, what are those, that's the Mantis, no, Mortifactors, I don't even know anymore, uh, Salamanders, oh, White Consoles, that's the White Consoles, Soul Drinkers, wow, look at that. Imperial Fist, or Crimson Fist, Templar, so it looks like there's a, I don't know, maybe that's just a generic skull, like, I don't know who that is, oh, an Imperial Fist right there, that's pretty neat, that's a cool lineup, now, I noticed when I was rolling these, I was like, man, these are rolling pretty hot, I don't know if they're, like, slightly weighted, or, like, just accidentally, but, like, let's roll, let's roll 10 of these real quick, so, there's 10, and how many ones we got, zero, <laughs> okay, cool, let's do it again, um, so we got one one out of, no, two ones out of ten. So there's, uh, I guess out of 20, that's about average, right? It'd be about 18, or one in six. There's another one, so that's 30, and that would be another eight. So that's slightly below average, I guess. There's another roll, and we got two. So I feel like it's catching up. I feel like it's the, it's the right number of ones, but it just feels like when you roll when you roll them, there's another one because you're rolling ten at a time and you're only getting one. I guess I guess theoretically it's one or two. And that's about what we've been getting right here, one or two again. So and then another two. So I feel like these dice are pretty average to be honest. Like at first I thought they were a little on average and on the good side, but now that I roll them and I'm looking at them, I'm like, this seems pretty average to be quite honest. Like. Not a lot of sixes either. It's always like that mid range. There's a six and there's a one. I don't know. These seem pretty average, you know? Like, these seem like truly average dice. And I mean, they got the not quite the square edge. It's not laser cut or anything. But man, I feel like just rolling them there. This was what, seventh time? Two and a one. And two sixes, three sixes out of ten. That's not bad. Like, I, I, really, I, I dig these dice. I feel like for the price, um, sure, they're a little pricey because you're paying for the brand, but I mean, they're they're nice, they're nice, hefty dice to have in your hand, and they seem to roll pretty decent. I feel like, and this is just you know your normal mat, um, the game mat EU space battle mat, which I pretty much use for every unboxing there, um, and also to play Armada and X Wing on it. <laughs> when I'm not recording videos, I can't remember a time when I wasn't recording videos, but here we are, and I love it. So what I do? All right, so I love these dice. Um, I think normally I don't like seeing the stuff on the ones, but uh, Hey, it is what it is. You gotta, you gotta real recognize the real when these dice, they feel good in your hand and they seem to roll pretty average. And at the end of the day, I can overlook some symbols not being on the one to uh, get a nice, good average dice roll there. I'm not sure if these are gonna sell out, but they're definitely cool in my opinion there. So that's it for our first look review of the new um, Codex data cards and dice. Of course, check out our first look unboxing review of the Deathmask box set, as well as our tips and tactics video on the Deathmask supplement that comes in there with additional rules for the Death Watch as well. It's a 40 page supplement and it's got about uh, eight war scrolls for the death watch as well as some ones for uh the eldar as well deleted scenes bonus content all the interviews and post game wrap-up videos can be located in the hall of veterans on the longward.net visit the longward.net today and try a week completely free with no strings attached that's not all the longward.net is also your hobby resource for exclusive early access with an ad-free experience to all your favorite videos. Members of the Hall of Veterans gain early exclusive access to multiple hobby videos.